Hi guys, Virtus Education here with episode 11 of the CryEngine 3 STK Beginner Tutorial Series. And in today's episode, we're going to be showing you how to create rivers inside of CryEngine 3. Now, for the most part, most of you probably will know how to make basic rivers. And having said that, there is two main ways of creating rivers inside of CryEngine. The first of which is simply just uh, using the ocean and making the terrain go uh below sea level something a little bit like this uh, which um, some, sometimes isn't necessarily the best thing to do for creating rivers and it does have its advantages and disadvantages so in terms of disadvantages this method here of just simply flattening the terrain below uh, sea level is that you don't get all the features that you get with the river system and most importantly you cannot actually use this above sea level so for example if you have some kind of raised river or it goes up a mountain or something along those lines then you know you won't necessarily be able to do that with the ocean so let's go ahead and take a look at the other system real quick so I'm going to go ahead and close the terrain editor I'm going to click this and you can see my little river here uh, and it's built up of these little key points as seen in the road system uh, that I showed you in the previous video and essentially we've just got uh, this nice lovely uh, river going through this little, these little uh, di uh, these little ditch holes that I've got here and also inside of this river it acts as per normal inside a river as you'd expect you can go inside of it you can swim you get this awesome post processing effect and so on and so forth and we also get a bunch of uh, properties that we can play around with such as uh, width, uh, border width, view distance ratio, depth, speed uh, fog density, fog color, fog uh, color multiplier and a whole bunch of other settings that we can play around with so having said that in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create your own river using this system and play around with all the associated settings. So let's just go ahead and get started. So before you do go ahead and uh, start putting in your river make sure that you've already sculpted your terrain or whatever it is ready for you to put in your river so you can just do a quick pass on uh, where you want the river to go. So to get started just go ahead and go to the miscellaneous uh, button inside of the object panel the roll-up bar go to river and then we can just go ahead and start plotting down the key points for our river so to start off with this all we're going to do is just click and then just keep clicking to place the various key points in our river now try and be as uh, accurate as possible however you don't have to be super precise as once again you can actually move these little key points uh, individually uh, at a later point similar to the road system that I showed you previously but it is good to be somewhat on target so try and make yourself a quick river as I did there just a simple matter of just continuously clicking to make a bunch of key points and when you're your last one just double click and it will finish it off so let's just go ahead and start off by assigning a material for your river so you can actually see it a little bit better. So to do that just go ahead and press no custom material over here where it says MTL and then just go ahead and open up the and it will open up the material editor. From here we can select a uh, a material for this. So to select a material just go ahead and find something that you like. Uh, for example in my case I'm just going to expand the oceans panel and it's going to use the ocean uh, generic material and take a look at that. Feel free to experiment with different materials to see how they look in context. Uh, this one looks as if it should be uh, relatively fine from now however I have noticed there is some slight performance issues here so I'm going to see if I can go ahead and find something a little bit more fitting. So just go ahead and continue looking for water volumes wherever you may find them so in this case I'm just going to go under water volumes and then water underscore forest A right click and just assign to selected material and uh, this seems to be working much better so you can see we've got pretty much um, the very basic river up and going here now however there is some slight problems uh, the main piece of which is the width of the river it's it's a little bit too narrow for our little river banks that we've got here so we need to make it span the entire river so I'm going to play around with this just by changing the width setting here so I'm going to change that to 10 and apparently it's still not wide enough so I'm going to set this to 15 
and uh, there we go it's now filling up the whole thing however you can see we do have a few little bits here which are actually overlapping which is going to cause us some issues so rather than just uh, you know trying to work with what we've got what we can actually do is set the width on individual key points as rivers aren't always going to be the same width the whole way around so let's just go ahead and do that so all you got to do is go to shape editing select a key point drag it into place wherever that may be and uh, just go ahead and uh, start moving it about and then if you want to set the width just go ahead and go down here uncheck default width and then from here we can just change the width to whatever we want say 0 or 5 10 50 you know whatever uh, fills your water banks a bit like this and just keep doing this on the various key points until you get to a point at which you're pretty much uh, comfortable with your river all the little areas are filled and it works uh, for you so I'm just gonna move that bit a little bit there so it doesn't stick out as much and uh, I'm just gonna keep doing these so this one here sticks out a little bit too much once again so I'm just gonna move it to the side a bit change the whip just to make sure uh, we don't have any problems but we don't need to there over here this key point we can just move it may stick out a little bit so we're going to change the width on this just go ahead and uncheck default width and then we can change it to whatever it is fitting so just try and eliminate any problems that you may have with your river uh, using this sort of method just changing the width individually as because as pretty much all rivers are not going to be the same size as I mentioned previously now just keep in mind you can move these widths with these little pieces as I said or you can also uh, delete key points entirely by double clicking them very similar to the road system which I showed you in the previous video so let's just go ahead and play around with some of the different settings that we have to make our water look a little bit more like water so we've gone over width the next thing is border width which is essentially the um, the border uh, around it when we use the align height map tool I don't necessarily recommend using this uh, for uh, rivers as it kinda does mess a few things up so I'm just gonna try and stay as far away from that as possible it's probably best just manually sculpt out your terrain next we got view distance ratio this essentially just allows us to uh, set when the river can be seen uh, so you know uh, just to help out performance some of these water materials can be relatively complex so when you get far further away from it you may not want to see it or something along those lines so just play around with the distance ratio to get it to a point at which you want next we got depth which just essentially allows us to assign the depth of the water how uh, how deep the effect of being able to swim the post-processing effect and so on uh, applies so essentially um, if you are not within the depth range you will not get this awesome blue post-processing effect uh, when you're underwater we can also play around with this but uh, we'll go over that in just a short moment next we've got speed so sometimes rivers will have some kind of current that current will usually pull uh, things along inside of it so if I go ahead and set this to 5 and if I go into a swimmable piece of water it should start dragging us along so there we go uh, as you see there it does actually drag us and it pulls us so I'm just gonna quickly move my river up just a little bit quickly so you can see that in action just a little bit better so I'm just gonna go ahead and uncheck shape editing and it's gonna drag the entire river up and there we go so I'm just gonna go ahead and press control G and when I get inside of that uh, we're actually being pulled along by the river now for the most part um, the river is only going to pull you one way if you just set a value for something like 5. However, if you set it to something like minus 5, it's going to pull you the same strength but in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this to uh, 10. Now, the next few settings that we got here are all, due, uh, are all 
little settings that we can play around with for the fog. So at the moment you can see this river is really, really foggy at the moment, not necessarily too realistic. So let's go ahead and play around with that. So if we don't want too much fog, uh, we can just play around with the fog density setting and set this to something like 0 0.01. 0 0.05 and so on and so forth so it's going to put another zero in there and as i add more zeros and just reduce the number the amount of fog just clears up now we've also got the fog color so if we go ahead and press this little button here we can actually define the color so for example if you wanted it to be something like a slime you might want it to be this disgusting uh green or if you wanted it to be red blood then you might want to uh make it all red or if you want it to be something like uh, some kind of trippy LSD land and you may want to make it something like pink. However, for the most part, water tends to be uh, a light bluish color, somewhat uh, a bit like uh, this. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, play with that color. There's also Fog Color Multiply, which essentially just changes how strong that color is going to be. Uh, but you don't necessarily need to worry about that if you use Fog Density properly. We've also got one last setting, which is for Acoustics. Uh, or Acoustics, I'm not too sure how to pronounce it. Um, but if we go ahead and uncheck this on and off, you can see what it is. It's these little uh, light ripple effect that we have along with sides. You can also see them under the water if you look at the terrain. So we've got a bunch of settings we used to play around with that, so most importantly, we can turn it either on or off. We've also got uh, acoustic ten intensity, so if it's to 50, it's going to be relatively fast. Whereas if I set this to something like 0 0.5, it's going to be nice and slow and calm, a little bit more like water is. Or if I set it to 0 point, say 1, it's going to be really slow, and you know there won't be that much of it. So that's pretty much all the settings you need to know about for there. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about your rivers. Play around with it, mess around with the location of your key point. Uh, key points. So here's just a quick recap as to some of the stuff we've done in today's episode. I've shown you the two different types of river uh, creation uh, techniques. We've created this nice, lovely river. Uh, with key points, you can go inside of it. It's got a nice post-processing effect. It drags you along uh, due to the current. And we've also played around with acoustics and a couple other things. That's pretty much everything for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.